are documenting how to get to the Mozets and Crozets area. Get ready for absolute heaven. But it can be quite tricky to get to if you don't know the route. So follow us, we'll give you the directions to get there yourself. Right, first stop, Super Morzine. You guys can grab your lift pass from here as well. Or if you're staying with MTB beds, it is included in some of their cake and chalet. When you're taking on this trip, it's worth taking a little look at the weather because as soon as a crack of thunder comes in, they close the lift and they have to wait half an hour without any more strikes before they can open again. If you don't make the cut and it reaches closing time, they'll leave you down there and you have to try and find your own way home. So you can see how quick the weather has just flipped. It's gone from pretty cloudy to absolute downpour back to real sunny day. So we're gonna try and make the push across. So we're now on the Zor chair and uh, loads of really good trails under here. You can see them all from the lift. Uh, we featured those in our Morzine edit, so feel free to check that one out. We're gonna get off the lift and go straight ahead. So you can see right in the distance up there is where we're at. That's the drop in to the Swiss National. So we've got to make our way over there. On a good day from Morzine, you'll get there in about 45 minutes. So we're heading down the Soylent Green now. Woo! Just want to follow this all the way down to the bottom of the lift. Got a nice flurry descent. Very mellow. Woo! So all of these runs end up in the same place. So you can take any of the runs down in this area. And they're gonna bring you out. Oh, very slippery in here. Just had a bit of rain. It's like an ice rink. And again, this area is so good for beginners. We've covered it more in our Morzine edit. Our Morzine overview. Taking the Soylent Green run is actually a bit of a detour, but it avoids you having to cycle up a hill. And I mean, who's coming to Morzin to cycle up hills? It depends though, if you're in a rush, you can just go straight past the entrance to Soylent Green, skip out this section, it is quicker. Um, but if you're making a bit of a day of it, there's no harm in dropping down to this section, the trails are real nice. And then it takes us up to the peak. And now we can just roll down onto the next, the next part. Beep, 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 beep. Keep following these yellow signs to the left. So we've just been coming down from this track here and this is a key part which a lot of people get confused at because there's so many different routes. So you want to follow it here. As you start going up the hill, bear off to the right and that will take you en route. So you can see this sign here. Anyone watching this video knows that they've kind of scribbled on the mozettes. It doesn't really stand out. So, this sticker will be your guide. If you want to get to Lake Montreant, uh, the Swiss National, Linderay area, follow that Trail Hub sticker this direction. Here we go, fresh from the graffiti sign. Soph is not happy about that. So this, this track goes on for a, a mile or so, or just under a mile I'd say. 
little bit of pedaling in it and it'll take us all the way up to a road. Straight up this little climb. So at the top of this hill, we're coming up to the crossroads. We've got the Aboreas climb here, legendary road climb, which is like 18 kilometers. Absolutely crazy. Left, we've got, you can take the road all the way down to Linderay village or Lake Montreond. But the route we want is down here. We've got a yellow, orange Linderay sign. And uh, that's gonna take us down a nice little bit of single track. Um, yeah, so a bit about this route here, a little bit rocky, um, quite nice and flowy, fast, um, not suitable really for absolute beginners, and if you're an absolute beginner you're not going to be going to the Swiss National anyway. If you stay on this route all the way to the bottom it's going to take you to Linderay sort of valley, uh, but we want to steer off before we get to that point. good thing about this trail is it doesn't it's quite quiet there's not very there's not often many people on it so it's kind of a bit of a commuter's route part of the Port de Soleil red, red trail the big enduro loop So when you get to this rickety old sign, you know you're on the right track. So now we're actually crossing, crossing parts of the trail from the Linderay runs. And uh, this is where we're gonna wanna go straight through it. So just past that sign, we're coming to a split in the trail. We wanna hang right. If we drop to the left, that'll take us down to the Linderay village. And the lift's down there. We want to stay high and uh, make our way round. If you do end up dropping into Linderay Villa, into the Linderay Valley, accidentally, all is not lost. You can still get the uh, Avoriaz chairlift up and you can make it down to this area from there. You can see why it's a bit confusing for people that haven't done it. But also if you just, if you look up rather than sort of following every individual sign, you will end up in the right place. So yeah, another one here. The red Tour de VTT. This is the route we want. So just keep on following these red signs. Lots of crossovers. Stay high, follow the red signs. We are almost there. Feels like you're heading into the middle of absolute nowhere. And it's kind of true. Going off the, the beaten track a little bit. Finding places that not as many people go to because they're not as accessible. And here we have it, your golden light. You have made it. guys can save yourself a cheeky 5% off the MTB Beds holiday. It comes highly recommended. So well worth a look if you're planning a morning trip. Back to the video. Now once you're on the lift, you won't be forgetting this in a hurry because it's ridiculously long, quite slow, 
but also it's just absolutely amazing. The views are incredible up here. Soak it in and uh, prepare yourself to take on possibly one of the best trails in the Port de Soleil, if not the best. So at this point we wanted to sort of double back under the lift and follow the fire road. This is your sign. Oh wow, look at this. The view never gets old. So as you're coming down the fire road, keep an eye on your left. They've removed a load of these rocks, I think, and it sort of changed the look of it. You could just about see the sign for the trail up there. Believe it or not, we've made it to the entrance of this trail and you can still access Moors in here without any lifts. So you can get home if the weather turns or for whatever reason you need to make a beeline home, you can get back from here. So, but as soon as you drop down to this valley, you're sort of a two to three hour drive from Moors in. So if they shut the lifts, whatever, you can get can get stranded but I suppose as we're here it'd be rude not to show you some of the features of this trail so behind me to the right you've got switchback central left right switchback some nice catch berms there really rocky at the top uh, these berms will hold you real well so you can hit them pretty hard and if you're brave enough to take your eye off the trail you've got the views that are just gonna make you breathless Right, let's get this drone up and then go and have a look at, down at the trail. Nice! So we're just coming into the first corner here and you can see it looks a bit different from trail side. You've got quite a few sort of jaggedy rocks, uh, quite a few jaggedy rocks. Um, nothing too major though. And the top corners are quite exposed, so you really don't want to be going over these berms. But um, I suppose that's why it's a black. on the side, back side of that. Quite rocky. Woo! Good little step up. So we've got ourselves... Whoa! Got ourselves uh, just over 600 metres of descent on this trail. And we haven't seen another rider yet. So it's one of the most quiet parts for the port of today. And I think that is just because it's a bit harder to reach than the likes of Morzine and stuff like that. So you have to go out your way to come and find it. And that's enough to scare a few people off. Whew. Not much respite on that top section. Still got so much left. So there's not many jumps along this run. It's more a wheels on the ground kind of trail, but this there's a nice little double here. And we come out of uh, some big, some big S bends and drop into this gap. So we float out, float out of this, set up nice and straight, taking the views quickly and then just pop off of this over there is it's quite a long gap but the the takeoff's really mellow so you as long as you get a good pop off the lip you'll get over that no trouble <laughs> right now onto the lower section 
bit of a technical rock garden here. Woo! Yeah, nice berm at the bottom to catch ya. Yeah. This is a proper track this. You can see why they would have run it for the Swiss National. It's got some real nice features. It's super fast. It's not over yet people. The track, the lower section of this track splits into two. Uh, they're both brilliant but I prefer this left line. The berms are amazing. Get ready for absolute heaven. save that for another day but for us now we're taking the mosaic back up to the top the real service he's one of the happiest lifties i think i've ever seen so this is part of the pds trail check series giving you guys a bit of an overview of the areas so you can make the trips yourselves go and check them out links in the description we'll see you for the next one